You know, another thing that I thought was so powerful, and Dad was always in front of the game with things like this, and that is that even before President Reagan was president, when he was the governor of the state of California, God laid on Dad's heart to do a special that was one of many, many specials that he did across America, and he had Governor Ronald Reagan, at that time he was the governor of the state of California, mm -hmm. uh, as one of his special guests uh, on his uh, on his uh, special, and that was just an exciting thing, and that led to Dad being a spiritual counselor for then Governor Reagan and then President Ronald Reagan, and what an honor, not only for Dad, but in my opinion, it was a greater honor even for President Reagan to be able to have my dad as a, a <laughs> spiritual counselor to him and to be able to help him through a lot of, of dark things through the years. And so I'm so thankful for that connection that that was made. And Dad, tell us a little bit about your experience with the, uh, going to the White House on a regular basis, being on Air Force One with uh, President Reagan and interviewing him the times that you did. Well, I tell you, it was Billy Graham who put in a good word for me. I got Ronald Reagan, who knew Billy Graham better than he knew me. And we were on national television at that time, but he lived in Sacramento. He had another house down in the L.A. area. But when he found out that Billy Graham was endorsing what we were doing, well, he gladly made time for us. And I'll never forget what he did on that first television show. It was so powerful because we aired it on 200 stations nationwide at prime time, got over 100,000 letters, which was unheard of. And you were in his office, in, his in office. the governor's office in, in governor's California. Office in Sacramento. Yes. And he held up a Bible, like I'm holding this one up. And he said, now, folks, it's amazing that in all the books and all the libraries and schools and colleges and universities, that we have books, but this book, the Bible, is the book that we need the most. He said, America needs the Bible, and we need to get back to the Bible. And he said, this book has the answer to all of our problems. This book does. And so that, that caused a great response, and it, his people said, this is what launched him to become president because he was on prime time, 200 stations nationwide. And then when he started running for president, then he wanted me back. And he had me in his home with his wife, Nancy, and it was thrilling. And we did another television interview. And he went on to be elected president, one of the greatest presidents, in my opinion, of our nation. And then he wanted me to keep coming. And, you know, I didn't realize it, but he sent me invitations to the inauguration and I was to sit on seat uh, row number four, seat number two or three or something like that. And on that, it said, I want you to participate in my inauguration. I thought, of, I didn't see that for some reason, but I thought I was too busy, too busy to go to Reagan's inauguration. And then after he was inaugurated, then he kept wanting me to come in and pray with him and, and counsel with him and I finally told these people, I said, I'm still the president of Revival Fires. And I said, I've got to give more time to that. So he he made time for me quicker than I could make time for him. But I thank the Lord for President Reagan and for the small part that I had. So I rented the soccer stadium down in, in San Jose, Costa Rica. And uh, the crowds had grown from 5,000 to 20,000 and Ronald Reagan, of all people, came flying in for some kind of a meeting with the Costa Rican government. And they wanted our crusade motel. We'd taken over one motel. They wanted our crusade team motel for Ronald Reagan. And they came to him and said, would you give it up for Ronald Reagan? I said, I sure will. But I said, I'm going to write a letter and you got to take it to him. And so I wrote the letter, and I said, you know who I am. I said, blah, blah, blah. Well, and he found out that I was giving up my motel for he and his staff off of Air Force One. He said, I want you to join me. You and Linda, get on the, get down here at the airport. I want to, you to come before I leave town. 
And so we waded through the crowd and everything, and cameras were flashing, and it was a great and exciting time. And we got up on Air Force One, and we just thought, this is, this is exciting. You know, for a poor boy raised tough down in the mountains of Oklahoma, it was beyond my wildest dreams. But God said, I will bless you beyond anything you can imagine. I'll open up heaven's windows. And he did. And you got course, to be on uh, Air Force One twice. Yes, but Reagan and I became good friends. Yes. And being able to be in his home, being at the White House. And I don't know how much I contributed to what he was all about, but I know that he was a, a good man, and he he used to preach when the preacher was not there at the church up in Illinois where he uh, went to church. And so... He had had a good background. Yes. And uh, so he he was attracted to me, and I was certainly attracted to him. Well, that and, was a, a great counsel for him to have, for you to be the godly influence in his life. And I know that that was a tremendous help. And, of course, this is one of many of the people that God has connected you to through the years that you've been able to have a tremendous influence in their life and, and them to have an influence in your life and the doors that God has opened up. One of the doors was Russia. And I'm so thankful for everything, the millions of people that have come to the Lord through the Revival Fires ministry in Russia. Over and, two million. Yes, so thankful for that. And putting, well, I made 27 trips. Yes. and uh, But we hosted over 100 trips. Yes. You were on several of those trips. Yes. You spoke in the schools. And, yes. Uh, Putting Six, Bibles yeah, into the hands yes. of young people as textbooks yes. in the public schools That's of Russia. Right. And you Unreal. remember, you and I went and met with Vladimir Saprikin mm -hmm. and in the Minister of Education. And Vladimir Saprikin gave their approval to put Bibles as textbooks in the public schools But he wanted them to be sure to have the first nine chapters of Genesis along with the New Testament so that the school kids of Russia would know where they came from. Yes, yes. And I thought... We sure need this in America. Oh, yes. In fact, Dad, you remember when we were in that meeting, he looked at us and through an interpreter, he said, what kind of a Bible project does America have for the public schools of your nation? And we had to tell him with our heads hanging low, Russia put God in school, but America kicked God out. Mm -hmm. And from that came the desire and the, uh, the vision to birth the Truth for Youth Bible uh, that we give young, away to the young people the, in the public schools of America. And we're so thankful, though, that in Russia, two million Bibles were given away to Russian public school students. And two million and to the military. To the Russian Red Army soldiers. And then that was a masses, thousands and millions of people that gave their heart to the Lord as a result of what God did through revival fires in Russia. But in addition to that, there was a May Day rally that took place in Russia's Red Square. There had never been an American, never been a preacher that had actually spoken at that. Over a million people in attendance in that one meeting. And of course, that was not a church service. <laughs> but oh, it turned into a church service. And Dad had the opportunity and the honor of being able to speak at that, share that with us. Well, it was an exciting time, Tim, and every year, as many people know, May Day, first Sunday, first um, day of May in Russia, they have what they call the May Day time when they parade all of their troops and parade all of their tanks and their, their soldiers and all of that. But when uh, the country brought down the Iron Curtain, they wanted to do something different, and they said, well, we need somebody from America, because America helped to bring down the Iron Curtain, because it was what Ronald Reagan had said that caused that to happen. Well, they had this planning committee, and they said, who shall we get from the United States? Shall we get a former president or a movie star or a ball player, or sports figure? And then there was a lady that was there whose daughter was one of our uh, interpreters, only 17 years old. And she said, well, there's a preacher here in town, and he started the church here. And uh, he's pretty well known in the United States. And they said, and he loves our people. 
He loves our people. Why don't we ask him? And the committee said, well, why don't you check and see? And so they came to me and with a little bit of rearranging of my schedule because they always drew a million people to their big celebration. And they said, would you do it? Well, I arranged my schedule and I, on the back of a pickup truck or, or a log truck or something, had a big truck uh, bed and the place people were everywhere but you know god stole the show and i'm glad he did amen when i was ready to get it to speak it had been raining all of that time there's people going around with umbrellas getting wet etc. not paying a lot of attention Ooh, didn't bother them at all but when i got up to speak folks the rain stopped after i finished my message the rain started back up that impressed those people more than anything I had to say. And well, it should. They had 150,000 communists who came to hear what I had to say Praise about God. Jesus. And I preached on freedom is a treasure. The freedom we have in Christ. The freedom we have as a nation and why America has been free and why they can be free. And that is what God did on that May Day celebration a preacher's dream is to preach to a million people, but on this occasion, it won the crowd, won Cecil Todd. It was a God stopped the rain yes. so they could hear the message. Then he started back, started it back up after I finished. God that was preached exciting. An, God preached an illustrated message with that yes. through you. And it was so powerful because it wasn't just a million people. The majority of those people were people that did not know Jesus Christ mm -hmm. as their personal Savior. So what an, an eternal spiritual impact Amen. as the seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ was planted and watered in them in that on that occasion. Absolutely. Wonderful, Absolutely. wonderful thing. And it was broadcast across all the former Soviet Union. I mean, the service was carried nationwide, not just to Russia. Right. But at that time, they were known as the Soviet Union, and uh, they became just a, a country of their own, but being able to preach to the whole nation. Amen. This was an exciting opportunity that just, to this day, just boggles my mind. Amen. Amen.